Hey guys, this is Henry from Obedia again. Today we're starting a new series of tutorials in Pro Tools in which we're going to be dealing with all kinds of operations that you can do to your MIDI performances. Uh, today we're going to start with the, I could say, the most important operation you would do in MIDI, which is quantizing. If you're someone like me that does not play keyboard, if you're not a keyboard player, chances are that your keyboard skills are not that great. So, um, just as me, you know, when I play the keyboard, I'm not very good with the tempo. Like, if I'm playing a chord, or if I'm playing a riff, uh, maybe an arpeggio or something like that, my performance, my timing is not very tight. Even though I play with a click, I record with a click, since I'm not a keyboard player, it's just not that good. But there are ways to fix those timing issues, those, I guess you could say, or that human error, right? You can fix it in Pro Tools um, so that it sounds like if you had actually played it correctly. Now, if you're a keyboard player and you're good with a keyboard, chances are you're not gonna need, um, you're not gonna need to use this procedure. But once again, um, if your keyboard chops are not that great, this could be really helpful. So, how do we quantize MIDI? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and listen to what we have, okay? I have a click track and a piano track, which is a virtual, uh, an instrument track with my piano, my mini grand virtual instrument from Avid, and I recorded four chords. This is one chord, second, third chord, fourth chord. Um, I was trying to play uh, whole notes, okay? But, as you're gonna listen, I'm not that good, so let's let's give it a shot. That one was pretty obvious. Okay, so yeah, as you could hear, um, when I play those chords, you know, I'm playing three notes at a time, that should sound like if they were played at the same time. In my case, since I'm not a, a keyboard player, you kind of can hear that flam effect, right? So we're gonna fix that. Uh, we're gonna use the quantize method for that. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna double click on my MIDI clip so the MIDI editor opens. There it is. As you can see, I have my grid. Right now it is set to quarter notes. Let's go ahead and set it to whole notes, so bar. So the grid shows you, these grid lines, they show you where that whole note or that bar starts. You switch to quarter note, you can see the quarter notes. So, in theory, if I was a good player, you should see something like, something like this, right? You can see all three notes hit at the same time. Now, that's not my case, because I'm, no, I'm not a, I'm not a keyboard player, so my keyboard chops are not that sharp. But we're gonna, sh we're gonna show you how to fix that, fix it. So, um, how are we gonna quantize it? Very easy. First of all, we need to click and drag. So we select all the notes that we want to quantize. As soon as you click and drag, uh, the notes that are selected are gonna show up highlighted, as you can see. I'm gonna do it again. You can see they're red, but when I click and drag to select them, they kinda go like pink. So now that they're selected, you can go to your event menu, event operations, and then you can select quantize. So the quantize operation, it's, it, that's part of the event operations window. So uh, here we go. How do we quantize and what is actually quantizing? So quantizing is a process in which the, the digital audio workstation, in this case Pro Tools, it'll read a certain um, quantization grid that you have to tell in advance. In this case, it is set to uh, hold no, but we could do like quarter no if we want it. It'll basically read that grid, and it'll take the notes that are uh, close to that grid and drag them to that grid. So in our case, these notes, uh, they were supposed to be whole notes, okay? So if I set my quantized grid to whole note, um, that's the, the quantization window is going to know that, hey, he was supposed to play whole notes, so whatever notes you find, go ahead and drag them to the nearest whole note that you can find to the nearest grid mark. In this case, to the nearest whole note grid mark. Now, uh, you have some options here. Uh, what do you want to quantize? Do you want to quantize the note on message? The note on means the start of the note. So the left side of each note like that. 
Or do you want to quantize the note off, which is the end, right, of the note? Uh, chances are, on most cases, you're going to quantize the note on. But if you select to have both of those, that means that it's going to quantize the start and the end. And the length of the note is indeed going to change. So as you can see, um, you can preserve the note duration. That's going to be grayed out when you have both options on. Now, um, if you select note on, you can decide if you want to preserve the note duration or not. Chances are you do want to preserve it just to keep that human feel. So we're going to quantize the note on. We're going to keep or preserve the note duration. And we want to quantize following a whole note grid. Why whole note? Because the notes that we were playing were all whole notes in this case. Now, the general rule or the, well, I, I wouldn't say a rule, but the general recommendation is whatever your smallest note value is, that should be your grid. So if you're playing a lot of whole notes, but then a couple notes are quarter notes, then you should select this to quarter notes. You should make your quantized grid be the quarter note. Now, in this case, it's going to be the whole note. So a couple other options. You can select if you want to enable the tuplet. Um, in this case, we won't because these are all whole notes. Uh, you can also offset your grid by a certain amount of ticks. Uh, some people do it uh, to, I guess, add like a drag feel to the, to the music. In this case, we're not going to use that. We're going to make it very obvious and very tight. Uh, you can also randomize. This is optional, by the way. These three options are optional. Or these three features are optional. When you randomize, what it does is that it'll take random notes and drag them uh, and put them in random places uh, that can add up to some point a little bit of human feel that you, up to certain amount, remove when you're actually quantizing. Once again, we're not going to use that. You can also do uh, swing. So when you swing, uh, that's related to, if you're, I don't know if you're familiar with um, uh, dotted eight notes. That's, I guess you could say a jazz term, but you can add swing by adding uh, a dotted feel to the notes. Once again, we're not going to use this in this case. You can also include or exclude within a certain uh, range. And this one, really important, strength. This is really important. Even though it's set as options, you should definitely uh, take advantage of this. So basically, if you have the strength off, that's the same as having... 100%. That basically means um, if it's 100% or off, that means that the notes are going to be dragged 100% to the nearest grid mark. In this case, the nearest whole note. Now, if you do, let's say, 50% and you quantize, it's going to drag those notes 50% or halfway through uh, to the nearest, in this case, whole note. So, this strength basically says how close you want to get those notes aligned to the grid mark. If it's 100% or off, that's the same thing. It's going to drag them 100% to that grid mark. So in this case, we're going to make it really obvious. So I'm going to leave that off. No swing, no include, no exclude, no randomize, no tuples, and no offsets. We're going to quantize the note on message, which means the start of each note. We're going to preserve the note duration, and we're going to set the grid to the whole note. So if I click and drag them, and then I set my quantize, um, my quantize function uh, from my event operations window, and then I click apply, boom. As you could see, all the notes were quantized and dragged to that, to that nearest whole note. And if I press play now, see how it sounds. Beautiful. So we just quantized our MIDI performances, our, our MIDI performance in Pro Tools. Once again, as I said, this is a process that, you know, if you're a keyboard player and you have really good uh, keyboard skills, keyboard chops, you might not even need this, but if you're someone like me, you're not a keyboard player, this would be really helpful in your sessions. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any other questions, please call us at Obedient PC Audio Labs, and we're going to be happy to help you. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Want to learn how to produce music using this, or using that, or using...
All of these? Have you been watching videos, reading manuals, blogs, and trying to figure out everything that it takes to be a music producer? Do you have a bunch of music gear that you purchased and you still haven't made any music? Well then you need Obedia, the world's only one-on-one -on -one digital audio training and tech support service. Check out the link below for a special new subscriber offer.